Kane and Lynch 2 Dog Days Game Review Lynch has settled down after the events of the first game in Shanghai. It's a good place for him to do business. And he's met a nice young woman, Sue with an X, who may or may not have already been introduced to Mimi with an extra chromosome. He invites Kane for one big job. Kane says it'll be his last. But before that, they have to take care of some minor business. And everything goes wrong from there. Like the first one, this has Kane and Lynch, you know, for a couple of days that just really suck for them. But this time around, there's a lot less real plot. It's kind of just an excuse for you to be thrown into a lot of intense situations. What plot there is, is decent enough. It's just... There aren't any real twists to it like there was the first time around. This one actually kind of reminded me of the Crank films. It's just constantly moving, you know, a lot of intensity, kind of exploitative, and, you know, Yeah, and the, the, the style that it's done in, the visual style. That's actually a pretty interesting aspect of the game. Basically, it's like there's a cameraman behind you, and everything feels like it's shot with a handheld camera, especially in the cutscenes. If it gets too, to be too much when you're just playing it normally, you can, there's a, a thing in the options where you can turn it to steady cam instead and it will be a lot less bouncy. But there's still this sort of effect of this is a camera. When you get shot, the blood comes onto the lens. When, you know, when you see a light source, you know, if you've seen, you know, just like it, it kind of glares into there's there's lens flares all over the place you know and it and it's quite nicely done some will find it you know kind of frustrating I mean if what I'm describing here sounds frustrating it's not really a game for you because that's what it looks like all the time it has this kind of gritty grimy feel to it again crank and that's kind of it you know where the first one took you across a nice number of locations. This one is just Shanghai, the slum. That's kind of it, you know. I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad location, but, you know, spending three hours there does get a little grating. And yes, the game is literally, I beat it in three hours. Sat down, played it, that was kind of it, you know, and there's not that much replayability. There are, you know, un there are achievements, as with a lot of recent games, you know, for the people who enjoy that. And there are four difficulty settings, and even on the easiest, it's actually challenging. And the nice thing is, it does actually keep the intensity through all three hours. The... The cover mechanism is almost like they practically forgot that they were supposed to put that in. You know, the game is all about this tactical shooting kind of thing, and the cover mechanism, I won't use the word broken, but it doesn't always work, and it is kind of awkward to use sometimes. The game does not have very many features. I mean, the first one, you could argue it was kind of pushing it. You know, it was very streamlined. This one is even more. And with the first one, there was not that much to do other than run, take cover, and shoot. This one, basically, that's all you can do. Run, take cover, and shoot. There are no grenades anymore. You can't swap weapons with anyone. You cannot order anyone around. I guess it's because it's Lynch, you know. Who'd want to take orders from him? You're playing as Lynch. Although he's on medication this time, so there's no, you know, losing control and that, you know, 
you remember that thing that made him an interesting character in the first game? <laughs> Gone. And you usually don't really have... It's basically just you and Kane. And Kane taking a backseat does really feel weird. You know, sometimes he's even saying things that are really out of character. He's the leading guy, you know, he should be. It doesn't feel very... anyway. Because he's the leader type, you know, he's the type who, you know, goes on a mission and you follow him. He doesn't really come across as the guy who would just follow orders unless he had really good reason to. The relationship between the two, although some of the time it doesn't really come into play, but it it works out okay. You know, it. I don't know if I completely buy that they'd be this way towards each other after the events of the first game, but still, you know, it's not overly buddy buddy or anything. The acting is pretty good. And, you know, the voices, I believe, are the same. The... Yeah, the, the, there are no grenades, but there is this new feature, and I guess this is... You know, it's because they didn't want you to be able to use grenades whenever. Whenever you wanted to. So now, they you can basically pick up something that... If you shoot it, it'll explode. You can pick that up and throw it. And then you can shoot it so it'll explode. That's not too bad of an idea, but they streamline... Basically, you can't miss it. Once you've thrown it, your next shot will detonate it. I never experienced it not detonating, even when I didn't want it to. A couple of times I accidentally threw them you know, too close, and then the next time I shot, it exploded. I'm not saying this will happen every single time, I'm not saying that there's no way around this, you can always pick it up and throw it again, but it's way too easy, you know. And that's kind of... the one thing this game has going for it is challenge, you know, challenge and intensity. While I did say before that it is kind of, you know, it's the same location over and over, this does have some quite memorable levels. I would definitely say that. Especially some near the end. You know, if you start out playing this and you're thinking, you know, you're not sure if it'll be worth playing through, it gets really cool near the end. Although the ending itself is just... it just stops. It doesn't really end. There's no, you know, great irony or tragedy to the ending. It just stops, you know. The first one had great endings. This one, it just... Yeah. You know, again, not very plot-heavy, it's basically just moving from one place to another. And there are good explanations for it, you know, they keep it going in a nicely interesting way, but, you know... And you're also, you know, part of the reason that Kane is there is to go through with this deal. The, you know, led by Glazer, who I swear got the role because he won the Michael Caine sound alike competition. The... The multiplayer. I still can't get it to work. Don't know what it is. Can't get it to work on the first one, can't get it to work on this one. I can't play Bioshock 2 in multiplayer. I don't know what it is. It just, it doesn't find any servers. Anyway, at least this time, quick on the multiplayer, they've added two new modes. In addition to the Fragile Alliance, where it's basically a bank, it's a heist, you know, and it can pay to, you know, become a trader and basically, you know, get away with the most amount of money. There are two new modes. One of them is basically Fragile Alliance, only there's now a an undercover cop, and he's, you know, one of the heist, one of the people involved in the heist, and he has to try to prevent them, you know, adding an extra layer of paranoia. And the final one, basically, there are two teams, one team tries to rob, and the other team is, you know, it's called Cops and Robbers, and yeah.
self-explanatory. One nice thing they did about the multiplayer in this one is there's a so-called arcade mode where you can play, yeah, the Fragile Alliance mode in all the same levels, I believe, with AIs as the other members of the heist, you know, same as the, the cops or AIs. And that's basically, you know, that, and they'll increase in difficulty. You'll play, you have three lives, you'll play a, a level you know, over and over, and with each round, with each, every time you complete the heist and survive and escape, it'll become more difficult, there'll be another round, and, you know, yeah, basically. Now, the AI in that is pretty good, both on the, both as far as your allies go and as far as your enemies go. You know, they have good aim, and it, it, it they get increasingly good aim, and increasingly good tactics as you go further. And I think there might also sometimes get to be more enemies. Now the AI in the regular game and just the story mode is actually sometimes it's quite good, but other times it's just bad. You know, enemies will instead of taking cover just rush right at you and you can just take them out without even aiming, you know, just blind fire into them. Other times, they'll be standing with their back turned towards you, and you can easily take them out, you know, at least for several seconds, they'll stand like that. Yeah, I don't know what... They clearly did not put that much effort into the single-player portion. The Near the end, there also got to be a lot of bugs, you know. Not huge ones, but still kind of annoying. One, the game crashed once, but, you know, nicely enough, the game actually, you know, put me at the exact last save spot, you know, the checkpoint saving still in effect, and I didn't have to play that chapter over, I just, you know, played from the last time it saved. A cute little details, every time you save, I believe it tells you what time it is, basically, you know, because the, you know, rather than anything else, it just tells you what time it is where at that exact point in the story. And it does give a nice, you know, kind of, I don't know, organic feel to it, you know. The levels are entirely linear as, you know, in the first one. But this time, there, there's a pretty good amount of opportunity for flanking the enemy. You usually don't have to just fight through. I think this actually has more usually it's more common for flanking to be a possibility in this game than in the first. Now the weapons are pretty cool and there's a nice amount of them. This one you also can't pick up more ammo from your allies. And there's no real, you know, the adrenaline is gone. Cute. Even though it's still intense, the adrenaline feature is gone. The, basically, sometimes when you get shot, you can still get up and you just have to click. I think it's the same button as when, for when taking cover, you know. Also, right off the bat, you're going to want to fiddle with the control screen just a little bit. Don't know why they put sprinting on shift. You don't really want to be holding down shift, not if you're using the WSAD, you know, key setup. You know, just put it right back onto space like it was in the first game. And don't use C for crouch, crouching and not crouching, getting into cover, you know. It doesn't make any sense. I used alt. That worked out pretty well. There's also, there's a couple of new nice features. You can switch the camera from side to side, you know, sometimes useful for when you're covering from one side or the other. This didn't seem to work that much in single player. I'm not sure it worked at all in the story mode, in fact. I got it to work in arcade mode, though. There's uh, an option that's called locate weapon, which basically means that any weapon in the vicinity will 
be highlighted, you know, because you'll run out of ammo a lot. You again can't carry very much ammo, so every so often you'll just be swapping guns all together where, you know, the first one that didn't happen as much. That's also, that's a good detail because it does make things more intense. Yes, you can actually get stuck in cover with no ammo left. That actually sometimes happens or almost happens. That's really cool. That gotta give him props for that. You know, that's exactly how it should be. I mean, I liked that you could pick up ammo from your friends in the first one, but this one just the focus is on picking up weapons more, so it wouldn't have made sense for the first one to have you constantly picking weapons up. The the gameplay actually gets kind of repetitive because it's almost constantly the same thing. You know, in the first, I don't know, maybe it was also just the changing locations. You didn't spend that long in any one location. And in this, it's just kind of the same basic... I mean, I'm not saying you run around in the exact slums constantly, but it's the same overall area, you know. You never... You're in Shanghai, and that's just kind of it, you know. You go to a couple of different places in Shanghai, but it's still Shanghai. Gotta say, the design of it looks great, you know. All over, you can just feel like this place is just, it has gone to the dogs. A long time ago, and no one ever pulled it back out of there. It is just, it is a bad place to have to be, you know. There's constant crime, corruption, things are like, patched together poorly, you know, it's just barely holding up. And I will also say, you know, as far as the intensity goes, you do generally feel like everyone is out to get you and you're constantly, you're being hunted. They are... And this, more than the first, I would say, feels like if you stay in one spot, you will die. You know, you have to fight your way through these places. The first one didn't feel as much like that, you know, it was maybe a different kind of urgency, maybe a more dramatic and emotional kind of urgency, where this is just, you have to stay alive, and that's the focus, and it really works as far as that goes, you know, you feel like you could die any moment. A little more on multiplayer. It has the Counter-Strike kind of thing where you have to buy your weapons, and as far as I can tell, you know, even if you already bought that weapon once, you have to buy it again to get it again, you know, and if you die, you go back to your main weapons, at least in the arcade mode. And that works quite well, and just like in the story mode, you can only carry two weapons, and that's kind of it. It does seem like you can carry two rifles, though, or at least two moderately sized weapons, you know. It's not like one of your weapons has to be a pistol, like in the first one. It seems like you can carry, you can definitely carry a submachine gun and a rifle, but also, you know, maybe a shotgun and a rifle, and yeah. I suppose that's about what there is to say about it, so, yeah, all in all, if you can get it for real cheap like I did, and you love this gameplay, you love the intensity, love the taking cover and shooting from cover, and just trying to get through, again, like I do, go ahead and, you know, or at least maybe rent it, you know. It's fun and it does deliver, but that's about it. Should maybe also note, it can be pretty brutal and disturbing at times. Although, in another way, it, you know, it's like Crank, it sometimes kind of blurs out, you know, the extremely violent stuff or nudity. Don't get your hopes up. It's not attractive is blurred out, you know, as if it has been filmed by a witness and you're seeing it and, you know, that kind of, you know, they, they went over it and edited some of it, you know, kind of. And it's also, there's a nice little, 
when, when you start sprinting, the cameraman sort of has to readjust his focus, you know, because now it's moving, it's a moving object that he's filming, rather than, or it's moving faster, you know, so there, uh, brief focus adjustment, that's kind of cool. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.